Okay, there you go. You can see this is a kind of different lecture, kind of different video that we're going to be doing here. What we're going to be doing here is sleuthing through the execution and looking at things in memory that are going on as our computer runs. So, what we're going to be looking at to begin with is a piece of code that kind of seems somewhat meaningless, but gives us all the key pieces we need to know about when we're dealing with memory. So what I have here is a file called demo.c, which happens to have three file scope variables, an int pointer and two ints, a main that sets a stack pointer to be the address of one of these other variables. We set count one to be one, count two to be zero, count pointer equal to be the address of count one. So this is going to be pointing at this value here. And then we go into a do while loop, waking up, we print out the address of a whole bunch of things, the value, the value of count one, count two, go to sleep for one second, do some incrementing, and then we do a little bit of a while loop going back and forth, just keeping this thing running. Now, if you are smart and the student are looking at the code right now, you see count one is one. Count one plus equals, or count one equals count one plus two. If you're a student, you're going to say, this is never going to be true. The code is never going to exit. And you are correct unless we can attach and remotely manipulate this memory, which I'm going to do through the use of the GNU debugging tool. That will allow me to actually attach to the running process, change things around based upon addresses. And I'm going to do this a couple of different ways in this video. So the first thing that I want to do, though, is make the code. So there we are. We've made it. And right now I am making it with static linking. So static linking basically means that the addresses are always going to be the same. There's not going to be any address randomization going on. And I'm able to look at the map file and see exactly what the addresses are going to be. I'll demonstrate this in the map file in just a moment. So what I'd like to do is just to show you that this will run. It's running. And you see that it is doing something. It is counting. If I run it again, like so. What you notice, this address is exactly the same as this address, exactly the same here. The addresses do not change. That is true when we use static linking. Now, I'm going to start this running again here. And we see that it is running. Let me open up another terminal here. So, I'm going to do a PS minus AUX right now just to find a process ID. And I'm going to attach to this running process, GDB attach, uh, 12161, like so. There we are, I am attached, and you see I can continue it running, and it will run over here. If I cause it to send a break, we'll get out of the sleep, where it counts, the while. We woke up, we printed, we printed, we printed, we printed, like so. We're doing all of our printing, we've gone to sleep, like so. Okay, and now what I'm going to do, since I know the address of the pointers, I'm going to, for example, print what is actually pointed to by, or, or dereference a pointer here that is pointed by, essentially, 0x4a83a8, like so. And I need to do this, actually a little differently. I'm going to throw a slash x. Whoops, wrong slash. Print it in hex. And we see that that is 4A83B0. 4A83B0 happens to point at count 1. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is a little bit of magic here. I'm going to say set what's pointed to by 0x4a83a8, like so, equal to 0x4a83a0. 
Notice that I'm changing the B to the A. I'm going to make count pointer now count at count two, or point at count two, like so. We have that. The address of count one is so. Count two, count pointer. Nothing has changed yet. Stack pointer is the same. The value in count pointer, you notice, has just changed to now be A. And when I continue on, like so, we go to sleep. And we exit the program because we are now done. Now, what I did is I manipulated with GDB that parameter was there. I was doing that looking off of this information that I have over here. I can do this another way. What I can do is I can look at basically the map file that we get. So this is a file that is created when the code compiles. And it's kind of a little bit of a cryptic file to look at here, but it's not too bad. As I scroll through this, we see a lot of different things going on up top here. And if I keep scrolling, what we're going to see, and actually I'm going to open this up a little bit different way so it's a little bit easier to see. Nano demo dot map like so. If I search, do a control W here. I can search for essentially count, like so. And then I can do another search for count, another search for count, and we see count two in here like so, is part of demo.o, count pointer is part of demo.o, count one, and eventually what we're going to see here and I should really be searching for count one. That'll make it a little easier. Actually, count pointer is even the easiest one. There we see in the map file right here, this is listing the hex address of those variables. So now what I can do is I can take and actually do the same thing. And I am not going to pay any attention to those outputs right there. I can start on my GDB like so here and uh, GDB attach 12664 and if I were to do something here like oh um, set um, what is at 0x 4a 83b0 equal to, oh, I don't know, maybe 8. I'm going to make that b0, which is count 1, now be an, a value of 8. That's going to be an even number. What we'll see happen if I allow it to continue running we see that the program exited because the value became something that was evenly divisible by zero and went away. Now what I did is I looked at the map file and figured out where in memory this thing worked at. So how does this work? These things here are what are called symbols and they are exported based upon the source code here, the way these are defined. This is a memory map showing where everything lives in memory. Demo.o is my object. These are the three variables I've got. And anything I would like to look at here, I can find. Up here you see some different libraries. This is where various code pieces exist at, and all the different methods, all the different library functions. Everything is listed in here, and I can look at what addresses they are given. Now in our case right now, actually here, we can see 
data segment where it starts and ends, all these different segments of code, BSS, um, fill basically is just extra space to pad things along, different types of things, again, data space that I might have, here is where some other pieces of my demo.o exist at, all this is in this map file. A lot of hex digits, a lot of different names, but what is all these things here on the left are exactly where in memory these things live at. Now, I did this with static linking, and those numbers, again, are never going to change. I can look at this map file. Whatever I do is always going to be exactly the same. Okay, so, what if I wanted to do something different and like use, for example, dynamic linking, which is a more common way of building things. Then this is going to get a little bit more difficult to track down because these addresses are going to change and we're going to actually have to look at information about the running process in order to figure out these addresses. So let me go in right now and make a change to the make file. I'm going to open the make file, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this static operation here. Do a make clean and make all before I run the program. And now, all of a sudden, you notice those addresses are a lot longer. And if I run it again, the addresses are different. And if I run it yet again, the addresses are even more different. And again, the addresses are even more different. What is happening is, each time we run the program, these things are going to a different address location. Why is that happening? Well, if we look inside of our map file here again, nano again, what I can do is I can search for, essentially, count pointer like so, and we see its size, which matches the size of 8 bytes that we're getting here, these other ones are four, matching with the fours for the two ints that we've got there. And I can search again for count pointer. And here we see addresses. But if you note, these addresses that are in the map file here do not match up with what I have here entirely. How can we figure out how they map up? Well. This is where we got to start looking at page sizes and other things like that. So in class, what we've talked about is how paging works and how memory can be loaded in or out. If I do get conf, like so, page size, that is, whoops, no space in it, it's going to give me a value of 4096 get conf, what it does is it returns to me the page size that is in memory for my system. 4096 bytes, 4 kibibytes. 4 kibibytes, if I think about it, is essentially 3 hex digits because it's 12 bits. 10 bits would give me 1 kibibyte, 11 bits would give me 2 kibibytes, 12 bits gives me 4 kibibytes. If I look at my addresses here, the last four, you see 48, 50, 58, 48, 58, 50, like so. Those are all matching with what I'm seeing here in the last three digits. The rest of it is different. The rest of it will dynamically change when the program is running. So in order to figure out what every or what is going on with everything, I've got to do something a little different. I have to go into the process directory. And so in the process directory here, first off, again, I need to find what the ID is of the process that I'm going to want to run here. So what I have here is basically demo running 13101, like so. And I can go in to CD. 13101, like so, and I can cat maps. Now, this maps, if you look at it, is a little bit different style file, but it's got a lot of the same information. So what this is telling me here 
is different pieces of memory, different segments of memory, what types they are. So read and P, readable and pageable. RXP, readable, executable, and pageable. That that I'm looking at right there is where the executable code is at. Readable and pageable, readable and pageable, read, write, and pageable. This right here is where my data is sitting at. Now, if we look at these numbers here, 55DC04BA5000, 55DC04BA5000, zero four eight uh-huh zero four eight kind of sounds like something that we saw in whoops this tab whichever tab I had it in in our map file zero four eight so with that being the case now let's go and again I'm not going to look at these particular numbers here I am going to GDB attach to my process here, which is 13101, 13101. So I'm in the deep sleep, like so. Next, in sleep, here we are, getting back to where we're going to count. We're going to loop back around. All right, so I've got this. And what I want to do is, in my case, I would like to find where this count pointer is so I can figure out what it's pointing at. So count pointer, if I look at the three least significant hex digits and then take a look at this page for everything else right here, I can come up with what the address is going to be that I'm going to want to print out. Okay, let's try this one over again. This should work a little bit better. 55 five, DC. 04 BA5050. Finally, it will work. There we have 4BA5048. Now I'm looking at the address essentially that is being printed, or the address here that we are pointing at. If I put a long hex in front of it, we see the same type of thing. This is what the pointer that this is pointing at, which is pointing to this count one, like so. Now, what I'd like to do is actually do a set. So I can set what is pointed to by 0x55dc, 04da5050, which is the pointer. Remember again that from the map file here, 050 and the rest of this address here. So that part right there is going to get replaced with the 050. That is going to be equal to, let's see, 0x55dc. 04 BA5 and now what I want it to be is the other count 058 058 like so so I've just changed that and now what I'm going to do bring this up here I will continue it on it will continue and we see that the program exited because what I did is I changed the pointer so it was pointing from one value to another value. So what have we seen here? The key things to keep track of is inside of this process directory here, these are the hex addresses where things are actually at. This column right here, what it is showing you is what kind of page, what kind of segment is that? Read being readable? X being executable, P being pageable, W being writable. We can write to the data here. We can write to the heap. There's a couple other things that are writable, but most things are not writable. The things that are executable, this is where code is at. 
This is where some library code is at. This is where some other library code is at. All that is in there. In my map file, excuse me, I can look at where these variables live at. The map file, if I look and combine from the page size, the smallest three hex digits, I can see where things are actually at. And I can map that, taking this information here, come up with an actual address that is, in this case, a 64-bit address, and show where it lives at. Now, the one thing I want to go back and kind of point out, you'll notice that this maps directory here, in this case, is really long, because what we are doing is we are using shared libraries that are very different locations in memory. You see, most of the code I loaded is at 55DC. The 7Fs or so on and so forth are in a different set of address numbers. The stack here, essentially where this other variable was at here, the stack C pointer, that's where all the stack variables live at. So if you're looking at addresses, based upon the values that's in the address, you can kind of tell where it lives at. What I want to do is I want to go back and I want to actually change the make file again for a moment. And I want to turn this static link option back on. And I also want to change out of this pros directory for just a moment. And make clean, make all. Now, as I'm doing this, remember how many entries are in this um, maps file in the process directory for the dynamically or the the dynamically linked system where I don't actually statically link in the libraries. Okay. If I do that, now what I'm going to do is run the code that I have just made. It is running. You'll notice these addresses are been back shorter and they're the shorter values that we saw previously because they will always be the same based upon how the linker links in the addresses. If I figure out what that process is, I can see that my process for demo is 14414, like so. If I change into here and cat maps out, you'll notice it is much shorter. It is much shorter because all of the libraries and everything that I need have now been linked into this executable page here. I've still got a heap. I've still got a stack. I've got a couple other things related to, to some other segments. Here I've got my, my code, basically my read pageable, my executable. They're all still pageable. I've got my read write for the various things, but I don't have anywhere near as many different things that I'm linking in from other pages of the operating system. The binary that I've created is larger, but it's all self-contained. The addresses will always be the same because it's using now static linking. All right, so what this demo has shown you is how you can basically take the hex digits from the map file, which is basically showing you what all the different things are that are loaded in, all the different pieces, and how you can actually take and then use that information to figure out the address of a variable in memory. That's going to bring this demonstration to a conclusion.